Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy. Show you the ministry of Christ is mercy. To receive the gospel, we're going to prove it right now, that to receive the gospel is receiving mercy. Mercy when received is recommitment on the part of the recipient. Have you received the mercy of God that he sent in Jesus Christ our Lord to give us and to perform the promises made to our fathers? Have you received his mercy and stepped out of the guilt and stepped out of the shame and the condemnation and stepped into the peace and the liberty of obeying the gospel, that standard of devotion in life? Have you received it? The ministry was no longer in the hand of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. We can be clear. The ministry was no longer in the hand of the Levitical priesthood. The ministry was no longer in the hand of the Aaronic sons. It was taken from them, as it says in the book of Matthew, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruit. It was given to the apostles of the Lamb. They were the teachers. They were the edifiers. They were giving the sense and the understanding. And everyone that was under the old covenant that didn't believe Christ, they were left in the dark. Christ, to all you believers that are seeking, learning, growing, purging, washing, that are looking into the devotion of the marriage, that are looking into the love of the covenant, that see that the relationship is permanent, it is sure, it is steadfast, because we have entered into the veil. We have entered into the holiest of all. We've entered into the divine love. God is telling you grace and peace be multiplied. Tonight, we're going to go into, by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God, we're going to look further into the relationship, the covenant, the mercy, the marriage, and the ministry that God gave to edify us in the marriage, in the covenant, in the devotion, in the obligation, and how Christ's teaching set us at liberty from the old covenant, the Mosaic law, and brought us into the higher calling. Tonight we're going to discuss that and we're going to look at God's manifold mercy. And tonight we have to look at the relationship. It's all about the relationship. It's about the deep feeling, the deep love, the deep kindness, the peace, the gentleness, the goodness, and the future. Because God's love has prepared a future for us in our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ's blood was sprinkled and the future is secured. The brides don't have to be competitive brides. The brides don't have to wonder about the love. They don't have to feel jealous. They don't have to be envious. They don't have to deal with strife. Because God who was rich in mercy for his great love, where if he loved us, is enough love for all of us. Whether Paul or Apollos or Cephas or the world, no matter who, who ministered to you, all is yours. All the love is coming to the bride. So the bride can be encouraged. The bride can be empowered. See, God sent the ministry of mercy, and the ministry of mercy is the gospel, the New Testament, the new covenant, the new and living way, and that ministry of mercy is kissing you, loving you, and affording you all benefits, all riches, all power, all might, all favor. You that have been called to God, why are you coming? Because God said, I will allure her and bring her to her place. You are being allured. You are being called. You are being summoned because you always have been loved. The Lord sent our king, the king of kings and the Lord of lords, to minister to Israel. The Lord God did this and wanted us to know, tell my bride, tell Israel that her sins are forgiven. So she can take off all the worry, all the stress, all the past, take off the attitude, take off the desperation. Let her know that her sins are forgiven. That there's a new marriage, a new and living way, and that your future is upon the horizon. You can be encouraged. And God said there's a stream. There's a stream. The stream in that river will make glad the city of God. So you, brothers and sisters, in the gospel, hearing Christ, and your heart has been turned to the Lord. Your heart has been turned to do it the Lord's way and say what the Lord said. He said, blessed be the Lord our God who daily loadeth us with benefits. You being loaded with benefits. You being loaded with love. He said, who forgiveth all our iniquities. See, God is letting you know, all your iniquities have been forgiven. Now be committed to the holiness. Now learn the vows. Now walk in the new and living way. Now put off the old mind. Put off the carnal mind. Because in the beginning of the marriage, what happened in Corinth? Paul said, I see you, you're, you're carnal. They were carnal in the marriage. He said, I see this envy. I see this strife. 
among you, and I see the divisions. He said, are you not carnal and walk as men, but you're supposed to be walking as brides? Look at that brother. He's loved. Look at that sister. She's loved. That the love is being poured out. Be encouraged, brides, and walk in the beauty of the bride's calling that she's in right now. Walk in the beauty of the matrimony. Walk in the beauty of the ministry of mercy that is given to you. And, oh yes, and God wants you to be convinced of his love. Paul said he was fully persuaded in his own mind. Let every man, let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind, fully persuaded about the love. Fully persuaded about eternal life. Fully persuaded God has included you in all that he's doing. He sent them in the church. First apostles, secondary prophets, thirdly teachers, helps, governments. I mean, everybody's included in what God is doing in salvation. So you include it. But to activate your mind and to activate your, the effectiveness and what you're supposed to do, you have to understand and believe the gospel of Christ and see that God has given you the fruit of his spirit. The bride must operate in the fruit of the spirit because the bride is living in the love of the husband's spirit. Oh, oh, wait a minute now. The bride is being comforted in love by the husband. The bride is given joy by the husband. The bride is given peace by the husband. The bride is given long suffering by the husband. The bride is being given goodness by the husband. The bride is being given temperance by the husband. The bride is given forbearance. The bride is given meekness. The bride, the husband is meek. Not wanting to fight or argue with you. Baby, I'm not fighting with you. God said in Isaiah 40, Speak ye comfortably to my people. And tell them that their warfare is accomplished and their iniquity is pardoned. But the bride was under such stress and being abused with men that did not understand about how God in his mercy appointed a time when he would say grace, grace unto the bride. Unto the believers, unto them that learned that the way that man operates in this earth is not correct. Forget about the carnal. It's time to be spiritual. It's time to be loving. And when God said he's going to forgive the bride of her sins, he's releasing you from those programmed habits and programmed emotions to make you loving and to set you at liberty in the beauty of the kingdom of God and the preparation of the marriage. So be convinced of the love. Because God is convinced about loving you. Have you received his mercy and stepped out of the guilt and stepped out of the shame and the condemnation and stepped into the peace and the liberty of obeying the gospel, that standard of devotion in life? Have you received it? Mercy when received is recommitment on the part of the recipient. Have you received the mercy of God that he sent in Jesus Christ our Lord to give us and to perform the promises made to our fathers? Because the mercy of God, remember saints, mercy is is always tied to covenant. Mercy brings you back to covenant. Because when Israel came out of Egypt, God gave them the covenant. He did not punish them, although they were making the calves in Egypt. So we can be clear. How did they make the calf in the wilderness? So obviously they were living in the Egyptian customs while they were in Egypt. They went away from what Joseph did. They went away from the paths of their fathers. They went away from the mannerisms of Isaac and Abraham. They went away from what Abraham did. They went away from what Isaac did and what Jacob did and what Joseph did. They went away from that. And they were mingled among the heathen and they learned their works. That is why when they came out of Egypt, it is astonishing that after God gave them the covenant that they made a calf. Where did they learn the art of calf making? They learned it because they were all part of the Egyptian religion. So you brothers and sisters that are coming into the gospel, you cannot look back into the world to be part of the world's religious system. You cannot be part of the Jews' religious system either, I mean the Jews' religion. Paul said the time passed of my life. You're out of the world. Peter, James, John, the 12 disciples, the apostles, the believers was taken out of the world. Christ said, I pray for them. Not for the world, because the Pharisees was part of the world. The Sadducees was part of the world. The Essenes were part of the world. They were all part of the world of disobedience. The world of unbelief. The world of distrusting Christ. The world of oppression, the world of hate, the world of malice, the world that was fallen. And Christ prayed for them that came into the gospel. That they would continue, that they would endure, that they would be wiser. And that the people would believe on Jesus Christ through the word believed on him in the beginning because the apostles were the first believers and be converted from the world
And God is long-suffering that man will be converted from what is being said in the false teaching of the Hebrew cultures and the Old Covenant and the false teachings of the Jews, Sabbaths and the false teachings of the Greeks and the false teachings of Egypt and Kemet and so-called African spiritualism, which is really satanic worship, and be converted to the gospel of Christ. 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Let's go here, saints. 2 Corinthians 4. Verse 1. The gospel must be important to you. Your wedding vows must be important to you. It says that we are dead to the Lord by the body of Christ that we should be married to another. So people, some people are trying to mix the old marriage vows with the new marriage vows. That's what the book of Galatians 4 rebukes. It rebukes the Sabbath day worshipers. It rebukes the, the false brethren. It rebukes men mixing the new wine with the old wine. All these brothers that kept the Feast of Tabernacles saying they're in the Gospel of Christ, whether they're saying that they're the gathering of Christ or they're the body of Christ or they're Israel united in Christ, all of them is doing it. You're seeing that these are all false brethren. They're false brethren because the Bible, the Word of God, already explains who those men are that are mixing the Old Covenant with the New Covenant, mixing the Gospel with Sabbath days and new moons. Those are all false brethren. And Paul said they are the accursed. They're not the redeemed, they're the accursed. They're not the blessed, they are the accursed. They're not the wise, they're the accursed. They're not believers, they're the accursed. They're not in the apostles' doctrine, they are the accursed, because the Bible said so. No matter how infatuated they are and excited they are with what they're doing, they're all the accursed. Because when you disobey the gospel of Christ, you step into the accursed, because what you're supposed to obey is plain. The, the Mosaic Covenant, the Sabbath days and new moons was only imposed until the time of reformation. That is plain. Many men have unbelieving souls. That's their problem. No. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 1. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we faint not. So the ministry was no longer in the hand of the Pharisees and the Sadducees. So we can be clear. The ministry was no longer in the hand of the Levitical priesthood. The ministry was no longer in the hand of the Aaronic sons. It was taken from them, as it says in the book of Matthew, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation bringing forth fruit. It was given to the apostles of the Lamb. They were the teachers. They were the edifiers. They were giving the sense and the understanding. And everyone that was under the old covenant didn't believe Christ, they were left in the dark. They were left still keeping Torah. They were left still keeping what was established at Mount Sinai. They were left where? Veiled in their heart. They were left looking at a temple that was going to be burned. They were left outside the revelation. They were left outside the spirit. They were left outside the unctioning. They were left outside the promises. They were left in their flesh instead of being quickened by Christ. Look at what Paul is saying here. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, showing you the ministry of Christ is mercy. To receive the gospel, we're going to prove it right now, that to receive the gospel is receiving mercy. But I have renounced the hidden things that we faint not, but I have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor, nor handling the word of God deceitfully but by manifestation of the truth. So you can't say, oh, um, that when it says Gentiles, it's talking about um, the, the nine and a half tribe. You're lying. You're handling the word of God deceitfully. You, you're straight up lying. In Christ, we can just deal with it plain and simple. That wasn't a mystery. The dispersion of Israel was not a mystery. At all. They even said in John, shall he go to the dispersed among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles. The Israel being dispersed among the Gentiles was not a mystery. The mystery was that the Gentiles, the Gentiles that were Gentiles in the flesh, that they're called to be fellow heirs and partakers of the same promise in Christ by the gospel. They were not partakers of the promise in Christ by the old covenant. They were not fellow heirs by the old covenant. They were fellow heirs because of the promise of Christ in the gospel. That's how they became fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. It was by the gospel. That's when they received the mercy as it says in Romans chapter 15, rejoice ye Gentiles with his people. 
for the mercy. That the Gentiles would glorify God for his mercy, as it said in Romans 15, because God is showing them mercy. What mercy did God show the Gentiles? He showed them the gospel. That's mercy. He showed them the new and living way. That's mercy. He showed them the Holy Spirit. And Gentiles that believe they were made partakers of the Holy Spirit. While unbelieving Israelites missed out on the spirit of promise that was given to them first. So we can be clear. That the gospel of Christ is the mercy. So people say, Lord, have mercy on me. Lord, have mercy on me. The mercy that God has on you, he gave you the gospel. The gospel is eternal life. That's mercy. The gospel is the forgiving of your sins. That's mercy. The gospel is the wisdom of God. That's mercy. The gospel is transformation. That's mercy. The gospel is the intercession of Christ in your life. That is mercy. The gospel is holy hope. That's mercy. The gospel is the, the peace of God and forgiveness. That is mercy. That you won't be punished. None of your sins are mentioned anymore. That is mercy. They showing you the Torah and the Old Covenant. No, no, that's disobedience. No, that's the schoolmaster. No, that's dead works. No, that's the figures that was imposed until the time of Reformation. No, those are the works of carnal ordinances. But the mercy. See, do you receive the mercy? All you brothers and sisters in the gospel, you got to see that you receive the mercy. Because the gospel is the mercy of God. <laughs> that... What did God say? I'm going to teach sinners in the way. Christ said, I did not come to call the righteous to repentance. I came to save sinners because sinners are being taught righteous. Instead of them being punished and being condemned, they're being taught the new and living way. That is mercy. They're being what? Rehabilitated. The recovering of sight to the blind. They're being renewed and they're being regenerated. That is mercy. Let him that stole steal no more. Why wasn't he punished for stealing? According to the law. Because they got mercy to stop stealing. She was caught in an act of adultery. She got mercy. Don't commit adultery no more. It's all the, it's in the gospel. Everything that you need to understand is in the gospel. Here we go. But I've renounced the hidden things of dishonesty. Commanded dishonest about God's love and his mercy. Not walking in craftiness, nor handing the word of God deceitfully, but by manifestation of the truth. Commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid. So, in verse 1, therefore, seeing we have this ministry and we have received mercy, we faint not. Verse 3, but if our gospel be hid, because the gospel, the new covenant, the new and living way is God's mercy on you. Look at this. It is if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. See, the God of this world blinded the minds of them that believe not. How were their minds blinded? We're going to read right here. Verse 2 Corinthians 3, verse 14. The God of this world did not only blind the Gentiles, the God of this world blinded many Israelites, but their minds were blinded. For until this day remaineth the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament, which veil is done away in Christ. So their minds were blinded. Where were they blinded? They're blinded because they're still in the Old Testament. They still think Sabbath days need to be kept. That means Satan blinded those brothers. Because Satan blinded me. I came out of 1 West, 125th Street, 25 years ago. That God showed me that was wrong. God showed me what the men were doing in that school. They were not converted. They're not hearing Christ. And that spiritual blindness is still upon many brothers to this day but their minds were blinded for until this day remained the same veil untaken away in the reading of the Old Testament so they read the Old Testament and they see the Sabbath is forever and they think you're supposed to keep the Sabbath because your mind is blinded 
all the old Mosaic covenant was only imposed until the time of reformation. Now Israel is not under the Sabbath days or the new month. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal. They say you're getting that from the Old Testament. No, that came from Christ. That came from God. God made the yoke easy and the burden light. This is coming from God. Will you hear the voice of God? And many people didn't hear the voice of God. That's why when John preached before the gospel, the baptism of repentance, they looked at the Mosaic law and said, no, we don't have to be what baptized in water for repentance. We don't got to be baptized. They don't say that in the law. And they stumbled at the stumbling stone. They stumbled because they wasn't hearing the voice. But the scripture said that John was the voice of one crying in the wilderness and many people were not were not baptized by water because they didn't hear the voice. They were stuck in the letter. And to this day, many people have not been baptized. Many people do not hear the baptism that Christ was even baptized. The reason why they don't hear it, many people are, have keeping Sabbath days or new moons or the Feast of Tabernacles because they're looking at the letter instead of hearing the voice. Because the voice is advancing you. The voice is excelling you. The voice is showing you a new and living way. The voice has made changes. It says the priesthood being changed, there's made of necessity a change also of the law. You got to be hearing the voice. My sheep hear my voice. They're not stuck in the letter. So the, the sheep recognize that John was a prophet. They recognize it. They recognize the voice of the Father. The sheep recognized that Christ was the Son of God. They recognized the voice. They were not stuck in the letters and the precepts of men. They heard the voice. No. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And that came from the Mosaic law. No, that came from God's moral law that's been established in the earth before Mount Sinai. Because why did the heathen king, when he had Sarah, and God came into his house, and wait, God was speaking to a heathen? Wait a minute. I thought God only speak to the Israelites. Oh, wait, what? God spoke to a heathen and said, um, that's another man's wife? That, that's Abraham, he's a prophet? And that's his wife. So God has been speaking in the world to mankind. And he said, I know. He said, Lord, he, the Lord said, I know in the integrity of your heart. Matter of fact, let me get that. Let me get this. Because we got to understand about the voice. The, he heard the voice. Let's step over here. Let's step here. Genesis chapter 20, verse, let's clip it. But Ahimelech had not come near her. And he said, Lord, wouldest thou slay also a righteous nation? Said he not unto me, she is my sister. He was speaking, Ahimelech said, Lord. So Ahimelech, meaning God been speaking to, this is a Gentile, God speaking to a Gentile? Abraham is in, God is speaking to a Gentile. Oh yeah, God speaks to the Gentiles. So everybody's without excuse. It said, For the Gentiles which have not the law, if they do by nature the things pertained in the law, these having not the law are law unto themselves. The conscience, the meanwhile, accusing or excusing one another who show the works of the law written in their heart. Showing you the works of the law was written in the Gentiles' heart. It was written in this Ahimelech's heart. Before the New Testament, before Mount Sinai, this law was written in a Gentile man's heart. So we can be clear. All right. Said he not, she is my sister, and she even herself said, he is my brother. In the integrity of my heart and innocency of my hands have I done this. And God said unto him in a dream. God was speaking to Ahimelech in a dream, and God spoke to the Gentile in a dream. Yea, I know that thou didst this in the integrity of thy heart, 
for I have withheld thee from sinning against me. Therefore suffered I thee not to touch her. So God was preventing Ahimelech from sinning. So God showed all wisdom to Jacob and to Israel, but is it afterward he went to visit men upon the earth? But before Israel came forth as a nation, this is in Abraham's time, God is dealing with the Gentile nations and directing them out of the fall of Adam and directing them into righteousness and moving in his spirit to keep them from sinning. To keep them from doing evil, to keep them from stealing, to keep them from doing, committing adultery. That's why I said the three transgressions of Tyrus and of Moab and of Edom. Because what? How could they have transgressions if they didn't have law? And how could they have law if they were not of Mount Sinai? The Gentiles had law, yeah, the Gentiles had law because God put laws in their heart. And God's moral law has always been in this world. Yeah, so we can be clear. That's what a Samaritan saw the Jew that came down from Jerusalem to Jericho and it fell among thieves and put him in the inn. Why did he do it? Because he had the law written in his heart that you should love thy neighbor as thyself. We see the spirit here operating, dealing. Okay. Now therefore restore the man, his wife, for he is a prophet and he shall pray for thee that thou shalt live. And if thou restore her not, know that thou shalt surely die, thou and all that are thine. So be clear. So God spoke to the Gentile. Okay. Let's move on. Huh. Second Corinthians, go back here. As a matter of fact, let's finish this in Romans 13. Thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the keeping, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love is meeting the requirements of the law, because that's the intelligent, upright, noble spirit. Nobles know how to act. The law was not made for the righteous, but for sinners. The law is to prohibit you from sinning. The law is to prohibit you if your mind is going to be seduced. Don't do it, because the law says. Now, let's step back to Corinthians. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry as we have received mercy, we have to look at this, that the gospel of Christ is mercy. So all you brothers and sisters that are in the gospel, you are vessels of mercy that have received the gospel of Christ. That is your proof that you are vessels of mercy because you receive the gospel. Look at that. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, and whom the God of this world blinded the minds of them which believe not. So the Jews in Jerusalem that did not hear Christ's teaching, the God of this world blinded them. And Christ had to take, Jesus our Lord had to take Paul out of that blindness on the road of Damascus because he was blinded as well. To turn him from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God. What was the power of Satan having Paul do? Blaspheme the gospel. Keep Sabbath days. Deny the cross of Christ. Deny the blood. Keep the old covenant. Persecute the saints. Live in malice. Envy. Hate. Hating one another. Observe days and months and times and years. That's what the God of the world had him doing. And he thought he was right. He thought the gospel of Christ was heresy. Because Satan blinded him. So all these brothers in these camps that are doing such things. They all blinded. You, you can look beyond them now. And move on into your mercy. Move on into the transformation. Move on into the regeneration. Move on into the renewing. And the blessing. And the prosperity. You brothers and sisters. The shepherd. When the shepherd call you. He's calling you to move on. Go forth unto him without the camp. Okay. But if our gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. And whom the God of this world have blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness have shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. So any man that's still observing days and months, any man that don't see, that hear what the scripture says, for if that which is done away was glorious, 
much more that which remaineth is glorious. Seeing then we have such hope, we use great plainness of speech, and not as Moses, which put a veil over his face, that the children of Israel could not steadfastly look to the end of that which is abolished. The old covenant has been abolished. It has ceased to exist. It is no longer under observance. So why are they observing the old covenant? Why are they observing Sabbath day? It tells you why. The veil is on their heart. You don't have to scratch your head. You don't have to wonder. The veil is on the heart. But it tells you when the heart shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. That means everyone is doing such. Whether they're saying that they're teaching the apostles' doctrine, or the body of Christ, or is united in Christ, or the, the BOCC, GOCC. They all deceive because their heart did not turn to the Lord. Because when your heart is turned to the Lord, the veil is taken away. You find out those are not the marriage vows anymore. You don't got to go to Israel. You don't got to keep the Passover. Christ our Passover is sacrificed for us. That's done. And when they say keep the feast, it means keep the understanding, keep the love, keep the faith. It ain't talking about get a lamb. In 1 Corinthians 5. But, if they failed, they didn't receive the mercy. Now, let's read here. St. John, chapter 1. Paul said he received the mercy. Therefore we have the ministry showing you everyone that was outside the teaching of the gospel, they did not have the ministry. See, the Levitical priests and the Pharisees were still talking and still burning incense and making sacrifices, but they didn't understand they didn't have the ministry anymore. They were not serving God at all. Neither were they representing God. Whether it's 2,000 years later or 2,000 years when, ago when Christ was there, if you were in the old covenant after Christ's blood was shed, then you don't have the ministry. You're not serving God at all. You're serving your own belly, your own feelings. You're serving your flesh. You're serving disobedience. You're not serving Christ. Not that day. So you brothers and sisters in the gospel, you know who you're serving. You serve the Lord, Jesus Christ. St. John 1, verse 12. But as many as received him to them, let's start from verse 11. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So to receive him means to believe on his name. But he came to his own, and his own received him not. They said the old wine is better. They said the old covenant is better. They said Sabbath days and new moons is better. They said the old marriage is better, and they're desolate for doing that. They're desolate for doing that. For again, for not obeying the marriage vows, for not seeing the mercy, for not seeing the guilt. They were guilty before God, and God gave them mercy by giving them, new, giving them the new covenant. But they rejected His mercy, and, they were, and, and in rejecting His mercy, by rejecting the gospel, they're outside of the marriage. So why are you listening to them? In their whoredom. Why are you listening to them in their lies and their deceit? Why are you listening to them? They have nothing to offer you. An adulterous woman has nothing to offer you. An adulterous congregation has nothing to offer you. An adulterous assembly has nothing to offer you. An unbelieving assembly has nothing to offer you. Because every man going to give account of himself to God. You're going to have to answer for your actions and your motives. Did you believe? The gospel of Christ. Did you commit yourself to the marriage supper of the Lamb? Blessed are they that call to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And the old covenant is not part of the Sabbath. It is not part of the marriage supper. Now. He came unto his own. His own received them not. But as many as received him. To them gave he power to become the sons of God. So under the, the works of the Lord. You cannot get power to become the sons of God. In Galatians chapter 4. It tells us right here. Galatians chapter 4, verse 4. But when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his Son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that were under the law, that 
we might receive the adoption of sons. And because ye are sons, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So when you pray, Abba, Father, that is the gospel's introduction for, to teach you how to pray. The gospel is teaching you how to pray. Man don't have the Hebrew, you in English. Pray, Our Father who art in heaven. When God was speaking to Himalek, what language was He speaking in? God speaks all the languages. Come on, saints. <laughs> he came unto His own, and His own received Him not, but as many as received Him, to them gave He power to become the sons of God. Because Christ got to give you power to become the Son of God. But you have to be redeemed. You have to be brought from under the old covenant. And if you're under the old covenant, you have not received the power to become a son of God. Simple. Plain. So now you got to move. But the such is receive him. Now, I need to read the word right here, receive. To receive, to accept as authoritative and true. To such as receive him, to such as receive Christ's teachings, because Christ's name is called the Word of God, to such as receive his gospel, to receive Jesus' ministry, to them to receive his ministry and trusted in his teaching, and not trusted in Moses, in whom the, the Pharisees was trusting in. No, them that trusted in Christ became the sons of God, because they accepted as authoritative and true his teachings. They assimilated through their mind, and senses the gospel of Christ. They gained experience and permitted to enter into their thoughts. They accepted what Christ said as the present truth and did not walk anymore in the form of the truth of the Mosaic law. Plain. To such as receive him. To such as receive his ministry. Now, let's step over here now. Hebrews chapter 10. Did you receive the ministry of the gospel? Did you receive the new marriage vows? Are you committed to Christ? Did you drink eat all of it? Because some people say, I, I, I'm in the gospel, they didn't drink all of it. They didn't drink the no observance of Saturdays and new moons. They didn't drink all of it. And when God took down the old covenant holidays, he did not give the Gentiles rights to establish Christmas either. Oh no, that ain't part of it either. You cannot add holy days. You, you cannot make a day and determine when God is going to move. What are you doing? God wants man to observe the faith, observe the righteous, walk in the fruits of the spirit, add to faith virtue, to virtue knowledge. God don't want man to pretend he can sanctify a day because he can't. Don't do what Cain did. You make up something and think God going to accept it. No, obey the faith. No. Hebrews. Chapter 10. Verse 9. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. That's what Christ's ministry did. Christ's blood was shed to take away the first, take away the observance of the first testament to establish the second. That is why it says in the book of Daniel 9, he will confirm the covenant with them for a week. He had to confirm the new covenant because the old covenant was abolished. The old covenant was disannulled. The old covenant was, the observance was blotted out. But we got to look at something here. They want to keep you under that covenant because that's where you can be accused. But God want to put you under his mercy. That's why when Christ spoiled the principalities and powers, he, showed a, a sh he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Because when his blood was shed, as it says in Colossians, he took you from underneath that judgment. For not keeping that covenant. And put you in him. And put you under the new covenant. And many men don't understand why it says in Colossians. Blotting out the handwriting. Colossians chapter 2 verse 14. Blotting out the handwriting of the ordinances. That was against us. And the Sabbath day was an ordinance. The Passover is an ordinance. The Feast of Tabernacles is an ordinance. Those are all ordinance. He blotted it out. Now. Which was contrary to us and took it out of the way. It was contrary to you because you couldn't live up to all of it. And if you, if you didn't live up to all of it, then you were cursed. 
So men that say they're keeping it and they're not living up to all of it, they're under a curse. And have explored principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or the new moons or of Sabbath days, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Those were all displays of God's love. Now the full understanding, the full view, the doctrine of light, the, the wisdom of God has come. Now walk in Christ. Don't eat poison because you already learned about the poisonous meats under the schoolmaster. What did God show? He showed you is not one meat better than the other. Come on. A man of understanding will have the care of his meat and diet. But you're not being condemned according to the dietary law. But God is calling you, the gospel of Christ, the call to walk with wisdom in your inward parts. Again, the washing. What does it show here? Now, to put an end to it, verse 20. Wherefore, if you be dead with Christ from the rudiments of the world, why as though living in the world are you subject to ordinances, touch not, taste not, handle not, which are to perish after the commandments and the doctrine of men? Now, Christ is saying that if you teach in the Old Covenant and Sabbath days, those are the commandments and the doctrines of men. Finished. That ain't the ministry. Let's move on. He, he, Matthew chapter 10 verse 14 so they didn't receive the stone but Christ's word is still the head cornerstone so there's non-messianics blinded men under the veil their minds are blinded they're not people you have to argue with you have to see that their minds were blinded Thank God your mind is not blinded. They didn't receive the mercy. They're in condemnation. That's why they're so angry. That's why they're so bitter. That's why they're full of strife. And that's why the lust of the flesh is reigning in their life. Because only Christ's spirit can mortify the deeds of the flesh. Now, Matthew 10. Let's step there. Matthew chapter 10, verse 40. He that receiveth you receiveth me, and he that receiveth me receiveth him that sent me. See, Christ was sent with the authority. It's a told us by what authority doest thou this. Christ's word must be held as authoritative and the only truth. Only reality you must live in. That's why I said in Colossians, when you heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel, that is why it says in Colossians here about the truth of the gospel because the reality that you must walk in is the reality of the truth of the gospel. Colossians 1 verse 5 For the hope which is laid up for you in heaven whereof ye heard before in the word of the truth of the gospel because the truth and the ministry is the gospel. That's what it is. Now, Hebrews chapter 10. But you know the scripture, they try to pull this. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we receive the knowledge of the truth. Now we already know what the truth is. The truth is the truth of the gospel. As it says in the book of Ephesians. I'm, I'm in the truth. No, what truth? You, what are you in? What are you calling truth? Ephesians chapter 1. Verse 13, in whom he also trusted after that you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. In whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So you have to hear the word of the truth of the gospel and then believe it. And after you believe it, then you sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. You could not get the Holy Spirit of promise by the works of the law or by Sabbath day. You can't get it there. That's what Galatians chapter 2 and chapter 3 makes very plain. God is making it plain so you could run, so you could operate, so you could know your marriage vows. Understand the mercy. You brothers and sisters in the gospel of Christ, you obtain the mercy. Now, you receive the mercy. You accepted the mercy. You in the marriage. You in the vows. You know what? Let's deal with that. Let's deal with that right there. Next. For if we sin willfully, meaning if you be undevoted, if you be unfaithful, if you're uncommitted, if you're not devout, if you don't stay in the learning, 
If you don't keep your vows of the new marriage, if you don't maintain the relationship, if we sin willfully, after that we receive the knowledge of the truth. Is that what it says here? There remaineth no more sacrifice for sins. But a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation which shall devour the adversaries because God's mercy is what gave us the new life. Mercy is what gave us love. And love is what gave us life. And Christ is that life. Of how much he that despised Moses' law died without mercy under two or three witnesses. So when God called Israel out of Egypt, his mercy gave them a law, a way to live. Some people loved Egypt so much, they despised the way that God told them to live. And some men love the flesh so much. They love man idolatry so much. They love disobedience so much. They love rituals so much that they don't love God. Christ said, I know you that you have not the love of God in you. Because how Christ told us to live in the love and the mercy as the bride of the bridegroom is man should be in love with him that made them. But they died without mercy. Why? Because they rejected the mercy that gave them a new life. Because mercy gives you a new life. It washes you. It swallows you. It adorns you. It educates you. Mercy gives you marriage. And marriage is commitment. And commitment has vows and prescribed rules of conduct and devotion and learning. And you need skill and understanding to maintain the commitment. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall he be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God and have counted the blood of the covenant where if he was sanctified, see this? He was sanctified. So Christ's blood already sanctified the nation. Christ's blood already redeemed Israel from under the old covenant, abolished the old covenant, and put them under the new covenant. The whole world is under the gospel of Christ. The whole world is under the new covenant. The whole world is under the commandment to walk in the fruits of the Spirit. The whole world is under the commandment to be transformed. The whole world is under the mercy, and the mercy is the gospel, and the whole world going to be judged by the gospel. Did you receive God's mercy and marry Him? Because God's mercy, for His mercy, He wants you to marry His Son. That means you didn't that mean you accepted his mercy if you married the son. That's the proof that you accepted his mercy, that you married the son. <laughs> All right. Of how much sore punishment suppose ye shall ye be thought worthy who have trodden underfoot the Son of God? They walked over what Christ said and kept doing what they felt like doing. And I've counted the blood of the covenant. See, there's the, what, the blood of what? The blood of the covenant. See, there's a whole new covenant. The blood of the new covenant. What did Christ say? Look, can we read this here? Matthew 26, 27. Matthew 26, verse 27. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it, for this is the blood of the new covenant. Testament which is shed for many for the remission of sins. So this is the cup of the New Testament. This is the blood, my blood of the so the blood of Christ put into effect the New Testament. Put into effect the word testament means covenant. His blood gave life to the new covenant. And you that are keeping the new covenant, you are receiving the life of Christ. Now you gotta grow in it. But Christ said, drink ye all of it. Some people just drink that Christ is king. They don't want to drink about the Sabbath day. We're not under that. They don't want to drink. They got to put off the malice. They don't want to drink. No more tabernacles. They don't want to drink. They can't whisper. They don't want to drink the forgiveness. They don't want to drink the skill and understanding. They don't want to drink the fruits of the spirit. People are controlling. What other people should drink. Christ said, drink all of it. They're picking and choosing what should be obeyed in the gospel. Christ said, drink all of it. Be, be committed. And don't have an attitude. Meaning don't let your carnal mind show enmity against God. Make sure that you are in the inviolability. That you have too much respect 
For Christ, take nobody said. Too much love, too much honor, too much reverence. Now, Hebrews. Of how much sorry punishment? Why is it sorry punishment? Because if you reject this love, there's going to be no love for you. This is serious. Is it God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life? For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. That's mercy. The gospel is God showing mercy. We got we to gotta step on in because there's more food for us to eat here. Okay. And counter the blood of the covenant where if you were sent an unholy thing and have done despite to the spirit of grace. So man is under the spirit of grace. And whosoever of you, as it says in Galatians chapter 5, Galatians chapter 5, we just going to read it. Galatians chapter 5, verse 3. For I testify to every man that is circumcised that he is adapted to do the whole law. Christ is become of no effect unto you. Whosoever of you are justified by the law, ye are fallen from grace. So all the men that said, we're keeping the Feast of Tabernacles because it's written in the Mosaic Law. We're keeping the Sabbath day written in the Mosaic Law. But it's written in the Mosaic Law, you're supposed to believe Christ. Why didn't you keep that? It's written in the Mosaic Law that whosoever will not hear that prophet, he shall be destroyed from among the people. Why don't you believe that? A prophet shall the Lord thy God raise up unto thee like unto me. Him shall you hear. Why don't you believe that? That's why Christ said, had you believed Moses, you would have believed me. Because he testified, for he spake of me. But if you believe not his writings. So everyone that's in the old covenant, or mixing the old with the new, you see that they don't believe the writings. The veil is on their heart. They didn't receive the mercy. Because mercy illuminates you. Mercy what takes the veil off of your heart. Mercy redeems you from the curse of the law. Mercy keeps you from groping in darkness as the blind grope within darkness. Mercy takes you out of the carnal mind. Mercy takes you away from the natural man who cannot receive the things of the spirit and makes you spiritual. Mercy makes you adorn yourself with the doctrine of Christ. Mercy makes you accept all that what Christ said. The men got to accept their role. The women got to accept their role. The mercy takes you out of the contest, out of the dispute, out of the grumbling, out of the murmuring, and the complaint. That's what God said, be ye not murmurers or complainers. Don't complain in this. Don't be complaining about anything in the gospel. Don't complain. At all. Because this is all beautiful. Your mind needs to be illuminated to understand the beauty of what God is doing. So, you see that these men have fallen from grace, so don't listen to them. Now, Galatians chapter 4, verse 27. For it is written, Rejoice thou barren that bearest not, break forth and cry thou that travailest not. For the desolate hath many more children than she which hath an husband. So who are the desolate? The desolate are they that are still keeping, what? The desolate are over here, in verse 10, you observe days and months and times and years. Those are the desolate. They're not in the marriage. They don't have the relationship with Christ. They don't have the relationship with God. They don't have the covenant. They didn't receive the mercy. They don't have the light. They don't know their vows. Because they're desolate. They don't have the spirit of Christ. They, don't, they didn't hear the voice. They didn't receive his sayings. They didn't accept the gospel as true. They disallowed the stone because they've been deceived. And God said the deceived or the deceivers are his. In meekness we can instruct those that oppose themselves. That God per adventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. That they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil. They that's observing days and months, they're in the snare of the devil. Complicated situation, they can't get out of it. Because their mind can't get out of it. They, the reason why they keep in the Sabbath day because their mind can't get out of it. They locked into the precepts and the elements and the this and the forever. Their mind has not been set free. Their mind has not been illuminated. Their mind is not sound. Their mind don't see the vows. Their mind don't see that they're guilty 
under the old covenant. And the only way for you to come into the freedom and the love and the joy and the peace is to receive the marriage supper of the Lamb. Receive that relationship. Since we're looking at the mercy gave us the new marriage. And the marriage is the relationship. And the mercy is what made the relationship permanent. But there's a ministry of mercy. And the ministry of mercy is the gospel of Christ. And those that are not in the gospel of Christ, they are not in the vows. They are not in the marriage. They are not in the relationship. And they have not received the mercy. They didn't accept what God did in Christ Jesus our Lord as an authoritative fact. Matthew 21 verse 42. Matthew 21, verse 42. Now let's look at this now. Matthew, let's look at go to Matthew 21, verse 42. Jesus said unto them, did ye, did ye never read in the scriptures? Because, you know, sometimes you talk to people that say they're supposed to be scholars, and they know the Old Testament, and they know the Torah. You talk to them about the Old Covenant, and you quote verses to them, and they tell you, man, I, I never, I, what? That's not in the Bible. You're making it up. Because they're not learned. Or you'll see some people that say that they believe they believe the whole book and you speak to them about the gospel of Christ and they say, what verse is that? Because they never read it. Because many people that are talking have never read the whole Bible. They have not never read the New Testament several times. So they're unfamiliar with the marriage vows. They're just repeating what was told to them. So Christ said, did you never read in the scriptures? The stone which the builders rejected, the same has become the head of the corner. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Therefore I say unto you, the kingdom of God shall be taken from you and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. So it was taken from them. They didn't have the ministry. No one should have been listening to them. It was taken from them. They didn't have the ministry anymore. They were not serving God at all. They should have not even heard. Christ told them, but see, before Christ's blood was shed, it said the scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat, Whatever they bid you observe. But after Christ's blood was shed, that was over with completely. Because the New Testament, the New Covenant was in effect. That's it. Luke chapter 7 verse 30. But the Pharisees and the lawyers rejected the counsel of God against themselves being not baptized of him. So this is a pattern of men. That they reject the counsel of God. Because they don't go along with their tradition. They don't go along with their camp doctrine. It don't go along with their elder. It don't go along with their teacher. But this is the word of God. And you got to hear the voice. They rejected the counsel of God. And see, it says the stone which the builders rejected. So in them rejecting the stone which the builders rejected. So they were the builders. What were they building? They were building people into the foundation of Moses. But that building has ended. That's why Christ took down the temple. There's only one building, only one foundation. It's that we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, meaning he's the founder. His doctrine and teaching is the founding. Not the Mosaic Covenant. No. The word reject. Which the builders rejected. To refuse to believe, accept, or consider. So this is what you're happening. When, you, when you're speaking to people about the gospel and you show them the gospel of Christ and the fruits of the spirit and the doctrine and the uprightness, a lot of people listen to what Christ said and they refuse to believe it and accept it. They don't want to accept it. They want to twist it. It don't mean that. It does mean that. They decided not to publish it. They told the disciples in the book of Acts, the apostles, they told them that it spread no further. They didn't want the gospel of Christ to spread any further. Because they, they decided not to publish it. Because they rejected it. Not fulfilling requirements. It is, not, it is not accepted or liked by someone. So Christ was despised and rejected of men. He was not accepted and liked by them. So it says, if they call the mass of the house Beelzebub, how much more they of his household. Blessed are ye when men shall persecute you and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Because what Christ was saying, the spirit of love and righteousness and peace and devotion and the chaste virgin is going to be persecuted by all those that are contaminated with the spirit of whoredom. They battling against those that are in the relationship with Christ. Isaiah 54. 
Let's look at this here. Isaiah 54. Rejoice thou barren that bearest not. Isaiah 54. Let's take it from one. Sing, O barren, thou that didst not bear. Break forth and cry, and cry aloud, thou that didst not travail. Hear what it says here, saints. For the for more are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. So the Bible is teaching us that everyone that's operating in the conduct of Galatians chapter 4 are desolate. They're without the marriage. More are the children of the desolate than the children of the married wife. Because what is it showing that we're the children of the married wife that came into the gospel of Christ, that came from under the schoolmaster, that's Galatians 3, that came from under observing days and months and times and years, Galatians 4, that, that were redeemed from the law and the bondage of those elements, thinking you need to do that, that what came out of what Hebrews 9 says, the dead works, and came from under the figures of the, tr the figures, and came into the time of reformation, you brothers and sisters are the children of the married Wife, you are the children of promise because you received the Spirit according to the election of grace as God promised. Enlarge the place of your tent. Let them stretch forth the curtains of thine habitation. Spare not, lengthen thy cords, strengthen thy stakes. Thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, meaning you're going to be rich, you're going to be blessed, you're going to be prosperous. God is with you. And thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited, meaning you're the one that's going to be heirs of the kingdom. That's what it's saying here. Know your future. Fear not, thou shalt not be ashamed, neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. For thou shalt forget the shame of thy youth and shalt not remember the reproach of thy widowhood anymore. For thy maker is thine husband. Thy maker is thine husband, but the husband has given you new marriage vows. New commitments. The fruits of the Spirit is the new marriage vows. The divine nature is the new marriage vows. To be subject to the gospel is the new marriage vows. Husband, love your wives. New marriage vows. And be not bitter against them. Marriage vows. Wives, submit yourself to your husbands in all things. New marriage vows. Fear not, thou shalt not be put to shame. Neither be thou confounded, for thou shalt not be put to shame. Verse 5. Let's skip it from here. For thy maker is thine husband, the Lord of hosts is his name, and thy redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall he be called. See, Christ is the God of the whole earth because he's the God that created the heaven and the earth, visible and invisible. Be clear. The Father gave the power to the Son to create everything visible and invisible. He even created the angels. Christ created all things. Whether it be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, He made them. Now, for the Lord hath called thee as a woman forsaken and grieved in spirit, and as a wife of youth when thou was refused. For a small moment have I forsaken thee, but with great mercies, with great mercies will I gather thee. In 2 Corinthians it says the gathering together unto Him. In a little wrath I hid my face from thee for a moment, but with everlasting kindness will I have mercy on thee, saith the Lord thy Redeemer. For this is as the waters of Noah unto me. For as I have sworn that the waters of Noah should no more go over the earth, so have I sworn that I should not be wroth with thee, nor rebuke thee. For the mountains shall depart, and the hills be removed. But my kindness shall not depart from thee, neither shall the covenant of my peace be removed, saith the Lord that hath mercy on thee. So all you brothers and sisters in the gospel, the Lord has had mercy on you. So obey the gospel. Be in full subjection to the gospel of Christ. Don't redact anything in the gospel. Study it, learn it, Live it, be blessed in it, be committed, because mercy is the recommitment to the covenant, and the covenant is the new covenant, and the new covenant is all love, because God said, I'm married unto you. Brothers and sisters, be edified. Brothers and sisters, be encouraged. Brothers and sisters, be blessed. Brothers and sisters, be empowered. And brothers and sisters, be enriched. And as it says here, let me read this here in closing.
2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 2. Grace be to you in peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort. So we leave in the church in the Father of mercies and in the God of all comfort. Be mindful whose hands you're staying in. You in the Father of mercies. Be mindful of whose hands you are in. Blessed be the God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, the God of all comfort. So you in the God of all comfort and the Father is the Father of all mercy on you. So you will come boldly before the throne of grace to obtain mercy, to find grace, to help in time of need because he's the Father of all mercy. So when you're wrong, admit you're wrong, and He will heal you. He will bless you. He will encourage you. He will cleanse you. He will regenerate you. Why? Because remember, He is the Father of all mercies. The God of all comfort, who comforted us in all our tribulation. And it's a tribulation work of patience, and patience, experience, and experience, hope, and hope maketh not ashamed. For the love of God is spread abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost that has given us. I mean, you always going to experience God's love. Married people always got love to receive. Married people always have love to receive. Married people can expect the love, see the love, hope for the love, believe the love, live the love, and know that God loves you with an everlasting love because God is love. Love is the consciousness of married people. Saints, be blessed. Grace and peace to all the lovers, to those that are in the relationship, to those that have received the ministry of mercy, grace.